Hey guys, how you doing? It's John the Ninja live in the dojo, aka the dojang, aka the John the Ninja students, and you know this, man! And if you guys still haven't figured out what movie quote that last part of my intro is, guys, come on, it's easy. Leave it in the comments, go check it out, somebody's gotta know it. But more importantly, thank you for tuning in, guys. You're here for concert resume number 42. I have to say, again, thank you so much for watching. I've been all over the place in 2022 you know, five months into this year, and already I've been accomplishing a lot of interviews, been getting a lot of fun, exciting road trips, concerts, things on the way. So keep on smashing the like button, keep on subscribing, and more importantly, keep on telling people about me. Guys, we're going to go far on YouTube, and we're going to have a good time doing it because we all love music. I love talking about the shows I've done, and I love talking to people. It doesn't matter who, rock stars, porn stars, pastors. If Jesus would talk to them, so will I. Let's keep this movement going. So Back to it. This is concert number 42. I had to dive not only in the concert resume journal, but I had to go into my life journal and see some of the things I missed. So much happened. So many things were in place for this particular show. And a lot of fond memories, a lot of fine moments, and a lot of things that I reflect on a lot. I didn't even think that a lot of this stuff was uh, actually connected. So it's interesting. Oh, there's my dog barking. And now he stopped. He knows when he's shh. Anyway. So let's get to it. This concert is going to be Sublime with Rome and the Offspring live at the Festival Pier that is now gone in Philadelphia, September 14th. Something about September 14th. That's a lot of good days in my life on September 14th. But either way, let's get back to it. So this particular concert had a buildup that had a lot of expectation. One thing especially, I was a huge Offspring fan. I love their music, I love playing their music, especially in high school. And uh, Gotta Get Away From Me was probably my favorite song at the time. I played it on guitar and bass, and you could play it on drums, it was pretty great. But when this tour was coming around, they released Coming For You. That today is still my favorite Offspring song. So now that we got you know, the Offspring releasing that one song EP and going on tour. We also have Sublime with Rome going on tour. Now, I'm still at MMR. It's 2017, and the thing we're doing is Pancake, who is my boss technically, he's the producer for the Pierre Robert show. He is leaving. He's on leave because his wife just had their second child. He's, you know, keeping his family going. He needs the time. So Pancake's gone. So it's up to me and Ryan Shuttleworth we are now not just interns, we're the actual producers of the show. And I can't remember who had Tuesdays and Thursdays, and the other guy had Monday, Wednesday, Friday. I want to say I had Tuesdays and Thursdays because that was my college schedule, so I guess Ryan had the other days. So what we're doing is pretty much everything Pancake would do. We're making sure the workforce blocks are ready. We're making sure that the word of the day is ready. We're making sure Pierre has edited audio so he can play it live. We're searching for clips, and we're grabbing CDs, and we're going back and forth between promotions. It was just... A exquisite time. I'm not gonna lie. It was really fun. The responsibility gave you that that adrenaline, that fear. You know, can I do this? I'm gonna do this. And every time we did it, you know, it was like, ah, thank God. So, you know, we get news that Sublime and Rome is coming into studio to play live before Pancake goes on leave. And I remember talking with him, and he was like, Yeah, man, I love this band. This is one of the bands I used to listen to in high school. It's my type of music. So. You know, I'm like, damn, I really wish Pancake could be here. And he knew he wasn't going to. So day comes, me and Ryan are in studio at the same time. This is pretty great. And just like with, you know, the Billy Corgan time when he was in studio. And I'm pretty sure Sublime with Rome came before Billy Corgan. Because the big thing I remember from the Billy Corgan coming was that it just seemed like everybody was asking me to do something. And I was like, ah, I'm getting pulled apart in all directions. And Ryan came in. He's like, hey, I can do this. I was like, all right, cool. And we, that teamwork was there. It was working. So it was pretty great. So again, my memory is a little iffy of when this particular live event took place. I do have audio proof that it did. So don't worry. And uh, if you want the whole entire clip, you know, just shoot me an email. The email is on the channel. And I can send you the clip of them live and me running the board. So let me explain. So, you know, me and Ryan are there. Sublime with Rome come in, and I, t I tell you, no lie, Eric Wilson, their bassist, is probably one of the coolest dudes I've ever seen. He's tall as hell. He's got to be like 6'6". Six, six. He walks in. You know he's reeking of the good stuff. You can smell it on him. His eyes are gone. He just keeps the, keeps the glasses on. Hey, how you doing? Hey, how you doing? Sits down, takes out his beautiful acoustic bass, and just I don't even think he's warming up. 
I think that's just what he does. He just plays the bass all day. And I could sympathize with that. You know, you'd be doing something. You got to pick up the instrument and start playing. So I was like, this guy's pretty cool. But, you know, Sublime's there. Rome is there. He's the new lead singer. And at the time, I'm pretty sure it was Josh Freeze uh, who was drumming for Sublime. So they're in studio. And it was between me and Ryan. They, big Bill, you know, big man Bill Weston comes up and says, hey, guys, we need one guy in studio with Pierre to make sure he has his notes and everything's going well. And we need one guy running the board. So I opted to run the board with Rabbi, rest in peace, Sean Tyler. So I go in there and thanks to my mentor, Marcus, I have an idea what's happening. So Rabbi runs me through it. He says, all right, you know, do your thing. So Rabbi watches me run the board. And the big two things we have to make sure is that Sublime doesn't cuss. We gotta hit the dumb button if they cuss. And then number two, timing is everything as far as going in and out. So, you know, I got the adrenaline again, I'm feeling good. So they start doing their thing. You know, Sublime or Rome. Pierre's on there. It's 93.3 WMMR, everything that rocks. And he goes into it and they start the interview slash live playing in the Preston and Steve studio. Now, for all you WMMR people, you know what's happening, how far this stuff is. But for everybody to find, it's literally like right next door. We just can't see them, but we can hear them. So, you know, the broadcast went well. Everything was smooth. You know, there was a, there was a scary part. So... There was a, a cuss word everybody knew in the Sublime song coming up. So me and Rabbi, we're on edge, like, what are we going to do? What are we going to do? And then he comes up, and it's, uh, Rome gets to that part, and he censors himself. He says, and I don't give a damn. And it's like, oh, okay, cool. And then right after that, he goes, and I could get less of shit. And we're like, oh! So me and Rabbi look at each other, and I beat him to the, I beat him to the bump. Well, they call it the dump, but I beat him to the dump button. And uh, both our fingers hit it. Mine was first. He hit mine as well. And then Marissa, uh, the Preston and Steve producer, runs. And is like, did you guys hit the dump? And she's always like, oh, thank God. So, you know, that was a fun little, like, you know, a little excitement. But I, I do remember that was just like, oh, damn, bro. How are you going to censor yourself here but not there? But we laughed about it. So we listened to the broadcast. And, you know, they get done. And I believe they did Scarlet begonias which was a cover from the grateful dead that was the last song but uh they did that or maybe they didn't do that all i remember is that's the song we went out on because they did do a cover of it and rabbi was like you do you and i hit it and we timed it out just perfectly and that was like a, a really really big thing timing is everything seconds milliseconds you know how smooth transitions are when you go in and out of sounds it's it all matters. So I just remember we did that. Really proud. Sylvain and Rome are taking pictures. So everyone gets their pictures. And in the back of my mind, I really want to get pancake and autograph. So I walk up to them after I think everything was said and done. You know, they're still in the Preston and Steve studio. I'm like, hey, guys, listen, you know, I apologize. But our producer, he really loves you guys. He wasn't able to, you know, be here because he just had his daughter. Would you mind signing him an autograph? They're like, yeah, no, no problem. Sure, whatever. And then afterwards, I got myself a very I have for no freaking reason why, other than the fact that my phone was probably still a flip phone at the time. Why it was the most blurry damn picture in the world? But I am grateful I got it. You know, it was a good time and it was just, it was spectacular. It was one of those days that, you know, just fondly stick in your mind. Maybe I'll do a video on like all the, the really fun days at MMR. Cause I don't think I ever, other than like after being an intern, I don't think I ever had a bad day. Maybe nerve wracking, but never a bad day. So here we are months later, it's coming up on September 14th. And of course I got to take my buddy, my concert buddy, Gwen with me to the show. And of, well, you know, probably cause nobody else would go with me, but there's a lot of expectation. You know, one thing, especially is I'm going to see my old running buddy, Colin. He was the senior, uh, I want to say the year before I, uh, I was done with school, but cross country, that guy was a machine. Absolutely no holds barred determined to run got his miles in and then went for more i don't I, I, listen when you got the bug you got the bug and he had the running bug and he was a real inspiration but the guy he's also a big offspring fan offspring and mark tremonti yes mark tremonti of alter bridge and creed he said and you gotta know colin colin's and you know he's a working class guy you know he's the typical you know like i i am a rocker but I'm a working man. And he said, literally, he's like, yeah, I watched him play and I cried. I was like, 
Colin crying? So Colin's as tough as they come. For him to say he cried watching Mark Tremonti, that's saying something. So, But he was going to be at that show. So I was really excited to see him again. And You know, me and Gwen, are, we're hanging out a lot. You know, we are going to events and shows. I remember, and I, I brought this up the other day. We went to go see this terrible movie. And I saw like a, a review of it in college called The Room. And I, I never forget this. You know, we were going with a bunch of her friends. So we're hanging out with all these people. And she said, hey, I didn't get you a ticket. You know, just get it there. I was like, cool. I get there. They're sold out. I'll I, Okay. And it was kind of like a moment when I had with, with Greg when we went to go see The Pretty Reckless. If you guys haven't seen that concert resume, go back. It was kind of like, all right, God, well, you know what? Thank you for just having me in Philly. I'm doing something. I'm not at home doing nothing. So if you want me here, let me be here. If not, let me figure something out. So I said, me not just, you know, let's go inside. Let's do this. And, you know, I'll figure it out. And I'll meet you up. And if I don't, you know, then I'll, I'll catch you later. So we go down the stairs. It's a movie theater in Philly where it's in Center City. You go down these stairs and then the movie theater is there. So we get down the stairs. They're doing check-in. I get past the security. I was like, hey, where's the bathroom? First steward. She's like, oh, it's that way. I rush to the bathroom. I go in there, I go to a stall, I wait, and of course, security guard will come in with me. So now I'm like really like, oh, I got to play this, you know, I got to, so I just, you know, I don't take my pants off. I just sit there on the toilet, you know, just like waiting patiently. Security leaves, everybody else is gone, I get out, and then, uh, yeah, I, I find the movie theater they're in, I sit down, and I enjoy the most terrible, I take that back, I did not enjoy that movie. I enjoyed the people at the movie talking trash and throwing spoons and stuff listen to the culture you'll get it guys but uh yeah that movie's god awful god it's like i lost a little bit of my my intelligence watching it but back to the resume story so we're here and i get to that famous uh parking spot in philadelphia off tax street i told you guys once i'll tell you again there was always a parking spot near a tree when i went up there to just for some reason it was always open that was my spot it was god ordained i was always thankful so because there's never parking in that area never so i always got that tree so i parked there i'm chilling i think i got there 15 minutes before gwen did or 30 minutes it's probably in the notes yeah 30 minutes before she did so i was chilling and when she got there you know she did her thing got herself ready for the show and then we walked over to festival pier and the thing I remember, that was the walk where we talked about, like, if you're ever in Philadelphia, I'm pretty sure it's not Parks Casino, it's Sugar House Casino now, where the Roxy used to be. It's like a hookah bar now, but it was a big nightclub back in the day, especially in 2017 before it closed down. And if you guys know where Dave and Buster's is and, you know, Fishtown, uh, hell, Punchline, the Fillmore, if you know that area, that's the strip we walked. So, we're walking, oh, of course, I forgot Delilah's is around the corner. Got another fun story of being in Philly with the boys on that one. But, so, we are, you know, we're walking that strip. And I remember that was our talk of, like, how that was her route when she would run, because she's a runner. So, I think she's done the half marathon in Philly and a couple others. But she was a runner that she told me the route she would do. And a lot of things, like, we're talking about skateboarding. Fun fact, John the Ninja does know how to skateboard. I have skateboarded. I've had some terrible falls and bails, and I've had some really great great moves messed up thing is i could do a variable before i could do an ollie weird either way so we talked about this one is especially big so we talked about like how i was looking into power ranger morphers i don't know why i was at the time but i really wanted a, a mighty morphin power rangers morpher uh, power rangers were huge big influence in me to getting into martial arts and doing all the excellent fighting i've done so she was telling me how her friend had a 3d machine you know one of those 3d printers and i can make one so i was like that's a damn good idea i'm gonna have to think about that well me being me i i just opted to buy the real thing this is probably 120 maybe it's 100 dollars. it took forever to find and i just I, I couldn't help but buy it you know what i'm saying probably one of the most expensive buys i probably shouldn't have purchased but it it does go for like 150 200 open and used nowadays, so I ain't going to complain too much. I'm going I, I to tell you, if I was in a in a fight in the Philly, I'd be like, yo, don't make me pull this. Don't make me pull this. All right, man, I got to pull this. I'm going to pull this out. They ain't going to know how to react. They might laugh their ass off or be in confusion. I, I don't know. So, <laughs> so we get to Festival Pier after just nice long talk and walk, and I'm, I'm pretty sure... It was starting to get dark. We talked to some, you know, like 104.5 was there and a couple other people like we usually do. But I was really trying to get in touch with my man. 
Colin, you know, I try to hit him up. I was like, hey, man, let's talk. He's like, hey, man, after the show, you know, I'll hit you up. All right, cool, whatever. So the first band comes out, and they do okay. They do okay, the openers. And I'll try and figure out what their names were for you people. But it, it was nice to just, like, hey, we're at Festival Pier. It's a warm night because, you know, it's September. It's starting to get cold now. And, you know, it's just, it was a nice atmosphere. People relaxing. Not like a Grateful Dead concert. It was definitely a hipster scene with people smoking and, you know, chilling out. The college vibe. So, that was pretty sweet. But it, it, it was now time for The Offspring to come. And I gotta tell you, I'm excited. I'm expecting mosh pits and kicking ass and all this craziness. And I, I, I won't lie. I was, I was a little let down. I was the energy of the band was not as crazy as it felt in the music. Like I've heard all these tunes, like especially come out and play. You hear that song, you're thinking of massive ass kicking, and you know all these wonderful sounds and this desperation in the music. Great, great storytelling. Absolutely beautiful storytellers, and the band's just kind of they're stuck in one spot. Now I will say this: the Offspring's drummer and Gwen mentioned this. He kicks ass. That's a punk rocker. Because homie's doing all this craziness and he's all over the place. He is the hardest worker in that band. At least at the time. He was he was the highlight of the offspring. And I love Noodles. Noodles was hilarious. Noodles was so funny. I even put in here, yo, but Noodles is a funny, you know what I'm saying? Can't say that on camera. But, you know, I was like, yo, this dude fucking hilarious. He didn't even real, you know, my brother. So... <laughs> But uh, I just remember, I was like, damn, I was expecting way more high octane ass kicking, you know, feel the energy. Like every time you strum a note, you should feel your clothes jump. And I just, I didn't feel it. So I had fun. I was head banging. I was singing some of the songs, but it wasn't that, that, that energy, you know, you put out and you get it back or they throw it out there and you put it back. You know, it just, it didn't feel that way. And I, I don't blame the offspring because I've seen videos of them playing before. And I knew what to expect, but something just, it felt off. So, but they were funny. You know, it was, it was a really good display of musicianship. Okay. Like if you don't know the offspring, you definitely should definitely go. There's no question about that. But the one moment for the offspring, I really took back was there was a part where they played a song. That song was going away and, uh, back to pancake. So pancake was there in attendance too. And his friend, may he rest in peace also, passed away not too long ago. You know, he was one of his childhood friends. And consistently, Pancake and his boys were always checking on him. You know, uh, he had cancer. So I remember by the time of this concert, I was done interning. And I, I think I stopped the eye that day. And I was like, hey, man, you know, I'm sorry for your loss, blah, blah, blah. I remember specifically, like, when I ended my internship, every time I would pop in, I would ask him how his friend was doing, see what's happening. So his friend passed away not too long ago. And I forget if he told me after or if it was going to be before, but that song really meant a lot. And he even posted it on his Facebook, you know, missing his friend and remembering him and the good times they had. So, like, I remember watching that song and thinking of Pancake and, you know, how his his boys must be feeling and you know my condolences to his family and stuff so but after that it it was a damn good show by the offspring they finished with self-esteem which every guy every guy i don't care who you are you are you either sing the lyrics or you learn to play the bass even if you don't play the bass <laughs> And they also did Pretty Fly for a White Guy, dedicated to everybody that was going to make babies afterwards, which, you know, I have yet to have a concert or whatever. That, I've had that opportunity. But either way, back to it. So after the offspring play, which another aggravating thing, guys did not play Coming For You. My favorite offspring song, They did, the new song, they didn't play Coming For You. I was like, guys, come on. So... <laughs> Offspring, Noodles, I hold you especially, 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 especially responsible for that. Not Dexter, because he has his PhD, but you. So, after the Offspring, I caught up with Colin. And we had a nice little chat. You know, he's very straightforward. He's like, oh, hey. Uh-huh. Cool. Very nice. So, he's one of those guys, but he's awesome when he, you know, he's just 
straightforward. Let's have a smoke. Let's have a beer. Good man. So, you know, we catch up. He says he's done for the day. I was like, bro, you're not going to watch Sublime with Roman. He's like, nah, I saw what I wanted to see. I'm okay. I'm like, that's crazy. I spent money on these. I ain't going nowhere. Actually, I think I got these tickets from the station, so they were free. But I act like I spent money. I ain't going nowhere after that. So now, Sublime with Rome comes out. When I say positively, again, repeating myself because you got to hear it, they blew me away. I was I was not a big Sublime fan. I enjoyed some of their music. But golly, they were spectacular. Let's, let's go back to Eric, the bassist. He is the band. He is that guy in the band. He has the aura. He's musically inclined. I had no idea. Watching that man play was one of the great joys of being a bassist. He is one of those guys that just effortless, effortlessly. So, again, they come out. They're doing date rape and uh, you better listen. And, oh, the wrong way was the new single at the time. So that was the song everybody wanted to hear. And it starts, I want to be back with you, girl, if I'm robbing a bank. I... Spectacular. So Offspring were good musically, but when I say that energy, again, Sublime had it. And they played a song, something about running from the cops. I've looked at the set list time and time again. I've looked at the set list, and I haven't I an idea of which song it was but it was about running from the cops and it was going down and so much happened not just on the stage but during the performance i even have it in the notes like uh these girls were smoking pot in front of us and offered it i can't you know at the time i did not smoke and now legally i can't smoke if i you know if i had a little you know bearings back in the day might have might have took a hit but i'm also a germaphobe so probably not because i don't share Damn, that's crazy. So, girls were smoking. There was a bra on the ground that said love on it. There was a guy. He he was he was pretty much protecting his girlfriend. She was having a great time, but she was all over the place. He was protecting her. And the one thing I forgot that I got from these notes was there was a girl hitting on me. She was shooting shots. And usually when that happens, it's, it's like academic. Every time a girl hits on me, I'm with somebody or I'm with like a friend. And I don't want to ostracize my friend and then go be me. And I don't mean a guy friend. If it's a guy friend, I'm gone. I disappeared. You won't see me until morning. Nothing happened, but you won't see me until morning. It's always a female friend. And I don't want to make the female friend feel a certain way. Now, being the age I am now, I should probably say screw it, you know. But also, at the age I'm at now, most of my female friends are married or have somebody. So, you know, it's usually it's not like, hey, I like her. You know, you need to shush off. But... In the notes, it definitely said she was shooting her shot. I was polite about it, but it didn't go past. It didn't go past like, hey, let's let let's link up later. So, but it is what it is. God's got a plan. At least I'll tell myself that. Maybe I should have just went with it. But either way, you know, can't stress enough. Sublime was great. They did do in time, which was really big from my memory because when I was a kid, a lot of the music I would hear would be in the car with my dad, and we're talking nineties. So like the first songs I remembered hearing on the radio were definitely Queen, We Will Rock You, and then going into We Are The Champions. You know, we're talking The the Clash, ooh, Rockin' The Cash Bar, and then Doing Time by Sublime was another one, and Doing Time was on Adult Swim a lot. So, And then uh, What I Got was a big one, and then the last one that they ended with was Santeria. So, spectacular show. So after that show ended, this is another thing I remember. We're walking back, and we're talking, we're trying to get to the spot. And Nas and Mary J. Blige were playing in Camden at the then Susquehanna Bank Center, which was the bb and Center, and now it's some other center. They literally just changed the name again, the Waterfront Center or some BS. So, you know, we can hear some of the music going across the road. So what we do is we sit down on the, on the chairs that's overlooking the water and we just listen. And that's, I ain't gonna lie, that was pretty cool. I'm like, damn, maybe we made a mistake. Maybe we should have saw Nas. So <laughs> funny thing is Nas is going out with Wu-Tang Clan and this year I got tickets. And that's also happening in September, September 8th. So not too far from September 14th, all those years ago. What was it, 2017? So one, two, three, four, five years later. That's crazy. And then another thing I remember was, and this is what I learned something uh, really crazy. So 
there was a couple that had maybe it wasn't even a couple maybe it was just a dance teacher and a student they had a boom box out on the waterfront when we were walking back and they were salsa dancing now i know a little bit of salsa to get going so they were dancing i was like oh gwen this is this is my people's music we gotta dance we gotta dance so i take her to the side and we start dancing and that's that's when i learned gwen gwen couldn't dance could not did the rhythm we we had to teach the rhythm. <laughs> I'm sorry, Ma. <laughs> I'm not trying to play her. We we had to teach the rhythm. She was very in tune. Like, hey, I don't, I don't, I don't dance like that. And I was like, okay. So I gave an impromptu dance session because I don't, I don't care if there's Spanish music going. Come on, grab somebody. Come here. All right, we're gonna dance. Da, 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 da. But that was that was a fun memory. I remember. And years later, that moment would come up, and Gwen would actually surprise me with being able to dance. But that's a that's a story, that's a concert resume for another time. So we get back to her place, I grab a water, we talk for a little bit, and it's probably like a, I wanna say a Tuesday, Thursday, you know, I'm gonna look that up right now, let's see. I'm gonna find out, September 14th, 2017. What day was that? It was a Thursday, I always have a good day on a Thursday. Maybe because I was born on a Thursday, October 7th, baby, anyway, so, uh, yeah, we had a really good time. I just, I, re I remember there was like a sense of peace because, you know, you're around all this weed and these people are having a good time, you know, and just, it was, it was a very good atmosphere. And there's a lot of other stuff in the notes that I'm not going to share with you guys, but a lot of other stuff where it's just like, damn, it was a really good time. Let me see if there's anything else. Very good show. Walk back after we saw people dancing. Oh, I even said that. I tried teaching her salsa. It did not go well. Sorry, <laughs> Gwen. Either way, we snuck back through a part of the pier. Oh, I forgot about that. Thank God. Okay, so there was a part of the pier that they were working on. And we snuck through. And we were, walk we were walking through and looking at the construction. And yeah, that was... Okay, so good thing I wrote that down. That's the last fun memory of that night. So a lot of fun things happened. So let's go. Let us roll to who played, what the music was, and how it was. All right, so Offspring first. They came out swinging. You're going to go far, kid. That's a really good song to start with. All I Want Was Number Two, Come Out and Play. Number Three, Cool to Hate. Four, Hammerhead. Five, Six, Have You Ever. Seven was Staring at the Sun. I did not know that one. And Want You Bad Eight was another one I didn't know. Bad Habit after that was Nine. Gotta Get Away. Of course, you know I was head back into that. Eleven, Gone Away. And there was even a dedication before... Dexter started playing on piano saying like this is for anybody who ever lost somebody so uh 12 why don't you get a job my mom tells me that all the time 13 Americana 14 pretty fly for a white guy that was the dedication everyone getting laid that night uh 15 the kids aren't all right and then 16 self-esteem so now we go on to the show stealers of the night sublime with Rome even though they were headlining number one was date rate number two smoke two joints three the wrong way four murderer uh, five, better listen. Six was April 29, 1992, and something about Miami. Number seven was Panic. The Ballad of Johnny Butt, Secret Hate Cover, was uh, number eight. Bad Fish, nine. Let's Go Get Stone, ten. Doing Time, eleven. Scarlet Begonias by the Grateful Dead. That was the one I mentioned earlier. It was twelve. And then the encore is What I Got, and then Santorina. Sublime with Rome. Absolutely spectacular. Guys, that was concert resume number 42. I know we're hopping around a little bit. I know I did concert resume number 90. We might do 91 too soon. We're going to be you know, going back and forth between the past and the current concerts I'm going to. I literally probably have eight concerts on the way that I'm going to this year. And I'm going to do concert coverage for every single one of them. And it will show up as concert reviews. So guys, be expecting it. I might do the concert review of Striper that I just did. Or I might do concert number 43, Ace Freely with Mach 22. One of the legends in our music time. And one of the few concerts my dad saw me drink. And I was like, you know what, boy? I'm proud of you. So. I'll explain that story when we get back. So as always, guys, don't forget to like. Don't forget to subscribe. Thank you so much. And remember, be smart, be mindful, and rock on. God bless you guys. As always, Ninja out. Taking from me
listen to John the Ninja. Oh, your ears are about to go on a vacation. John the Ninja's got what you need.